Welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast Podcast, brought to you by com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by Nate Weitzer. He's on the East Coast, and we're looking at play of props here on a Wednesday in the NBA. We also have best bets up, as we do each and every weekday this season and into this postseason, so make sure to follow along. Continue continue to do so. Subscribe to that page. Also want you to head to thelines.com and use everything we have up on the site to help you out, including Mach Madness, about to kick off. And as far as the NBA, head over to that NBA tab check out that prop finder tool that we have up there. It's very effective to help you see all these bets in front of you with the best juice available to you. Nate, let's go ahead and get into these uh, play of props last night. I believe we had a little five and two night there. So feeling pretty good about the units. Let's pick up, pick up some more. Yes, sir. I'll take an under here with the Aaron Fox under 32 and a half points and rebounds, uh, throwing the rebounds in there. Although 27 and a half points is a little high. As well, I mean, we've been talking about this most of the season, that there's kind of a negative correlation for Fox when the Kings are big favorites. Also, a bit of a negative correlation on the road and against Eastern Conference teams, which I'll circle back to here. Uh, but they are 11-point favorites in Toronto, a Raptors team that's lost 9 of 10. Um, the only win over Charlotte. And they have the worst offensive rating in the last three here, 99 offensive rating. So if you look at the game log, Fox pretty much trends under this prop against any team with a bottom 10 offensive rating, just not forced to, you know, get into that kind of shootout affair where it's like, don't take them against like the Lakers or, or, you know, the, the Clippers, if they're hot or, you know, basically a division team, like the more, the more um, important the game, the more back and forth it's going to be in terms of high scoring and, and playoff stakes. Like that's when you take De'Aaron Fox over. Otherwise, like he's got to, he's got to conserve some energy and you look at the schedule after this, Front end of a back to back. They're at Washington tomorrow. They have Orlando two nights later. Next week, they're home twice against Dallas. Those are the games, again, the Dallas games where you're going to expect the most out of Fox. And his numbers kind of inflated because he's been playing some Western Conference teams. But you look at the, the Eastern Conference game log, eight of his last 11, he's gone under. He's averaging 21.8 points, 4.4 rebounds. The last 10 versus the West, for example, 28 and a half points, six rebounds. So we're talking about 34 PR versus like 26. It's a, it's a quite a big gap here. The usage rate is three and a half percent higher when he's playing the West. And he's got DeMontis Sabonis on his team. So like the rebounds, that's why that's basically why I'm throwing the rebounds in here. It's like you have the best rebounder in the league. The guy gobbling up 23 rebound chances per game. Fox on the road this year has averages 4.2 boards on seven Point three rebound chances. The Raptors have gutted their front their front court. They are not playing anybody big, so Domas is going to eat. His props are just a little too high for my blood here, but uh, I just don't think Fox is going to need to mix it up. Like he could even get over this with twenty eight, twenty nine points and only have a couple rebounds. And um, yeah, I don't think he'll ch- score in transition that much against Toronto. Like they've actually been pretty good against point guards with IQ at the at the point of attack. They are much much worse down low so again it's like more of a Sabonis game for me than Fox it makes sense I don't know how this game stays close considering that uh we don't have anybody playing for Toronto and they are as we've talked about in full full blown tank uh and and now now we're basically looking at them without anybody I mean Emmanuel quickly is not going to play in this game you gonna be seeing a lot of Grady Dick and a lot of uh Gary Trent and a lot of Akbay Akbaji so I'll stick around in this game and talk about Akbaji because I've liked him ever since he was on the Jazz and he actually gets time I mean he's he's an up and down player but at only 10 and a half points at minus 106 on FanDuel like he's gonna be taking shots. He's already up to nine and a half field goal attempts over his last two games uh and that's where we're at now like who else is going to shoot if Barnes quickly Barrett Pirtle Boucher I mean anybody that's that's really taken any kind of usage for this team this season isn't going to be in other than Gary Trent the only dude and that now you got some Bruce Brown stuff in there too but he's even only at like 26 28 minutes per game they're not even really trying to unleash any kind of Bruce Brown either so um you know with in terms of this this one in transition this is where Sack is weak uh super weak especially over the uh the, the last roughly like 10 games or so allowing the seventh most uh, transition points on the season they are limiting fast break points but the uh the, the Raptors don't fast break they just 
move the tempo in, in transition and they just keep the ball from having they basically keep themselves from having to play a half court offense as much as possible uh, which is why they've been one of the highest uh, frequency transition teams in the league the last two or three seasons so you know the, the way that uh, this team plays with you know a lot base relying on point guards and guards to kick off everything for them especially without a guy like Scotty Barnes who they'd love to have be that sort of point forward uh, I think Akbaji is going to have the ball in his hands enough to like to make a pretty big impact in this game uh, he, he is listed as like a forward he's a pretty he's a hybrid dude in that sense and his his type of uh, scoring profile something that's sec definitely Sacramento has struggled with this season with guys like Harrison Barnes and Keegan Murray really not holding the, their weight on defense especially against quicker dudes for for both of them who are not exactly the fleetest of feet um, and and so the the minutes per game should be there for him he's in second in minutes over the last five games uh, and really over the last 10 for this team Akbaji's mm-hmm. gotten in there a ton he and Kelly Olenek you know, the pickups that they had are, are dudes they picked up to just play those garbage minutes. And this is a game that's going to be full of garbage minutes, whether it's close or not. Uh, there's going to be a lot of, of minutes where I think Stack is like, can we please go home now? Uh, we would just like for this to be over. So uh, the the transition points being there, the uh, t- the ability to, to get to the rim as well. Sacramento over the last 10 ha- is a bottom 10 team in terms of defending the rim, field goal percentage at the rim, paint percentage to their opponent, all that stuff. That's where Akbaji is going to live. He will probably get about three, let's say four, three point attempts up, maybe four without with the amount of dudes that are not in at this point. So he'll have the opportunity to score from deep against one of the worst three point defenses in the league for Sacramento been a problem for them all season. So it's either three pointers or or going to the basket for this dude. And and with the minutes and volume that he's at, I got to take him to get 11 points. Yeah, the, let the young guys spin. Um, yeah, quickly being out too for personal reasons, just clocked that as well. I mean, Still, still like the Fox under. Yeah, I think maybe a hope, a hope for the blowout potential more so than, than, it, but that's what I'm talking about. It's just like he doesn't have a give a care factor here, front end of a back to back for Sacramento. I, I don't expect them to have a stellar effort on the defensive end either. And that should help Agbaji. Basically, the same look here is who else going to shoot for the Memphis Grizzlies? Um, but Santi Aldama is going to have a lot of touches, I think, in terms of playmaking as well. Uh, so I'll go over 21 and a half points, rebounds, assists, gets you the best juice here. Um, if you take his justice points or points, rebounds, you're at like minus 120. And he's questionable with the elbow. There's a chance he sits, in which case you just get your stake back. But when he's been out there, he's been full go. He played 39 minutes in back-to-back games because with Luke Kennard now out for personal reasons, the, the Grizz have 10 guys ruled out. Um, so, And Kennard was actually facilitating a lot. I mean, he was second behind Desmond Bain in these two games with Bain back in terms of, of passes made. Aldamo's third with seven and a half potential assists. He's also leading anyone who's playing significant minutes in rebound chances, 79% in that span. Uh, and we like to disparage Triple J's rebounding ability. He's at 44%. So just not even mixing it up in there. Uh, and we're going against the Warriors. Draymond is questionable with a back issue. Uh, the last time the war he missed a game, the, the Warriors gave up 30 assists to the Mavs, despite the Mavs shooting six for 27 from deep. So the, a lot of assists left on the table there. I mean, Memphis, not a great shooting team, but still could get a few dimes for Santi here. I mean, we're talking about a prop of like two or three tacked on here to his points and rebounds, but the rebound chances are what I think you can hang your hat on here. Uh, I mean, even his last eight, he is the number one guy on this team in terms of rebound chance percentage is his minutes are really starting to spike. Um, and yeah, I did like it even more if Draymond doesn't play, but the, the Warriors with him in there, have given up the seventh most rebounds, fifth most assist to power forwards in their last 30. And um, yeah, I, again, I give a care factor, like how much are they going to care about Santi Aldama trying to make plays and grab boards? I, I truly don't know. Uh, I, I don't know how to answer your question. I, I don't, I don't, I mean, maybe they'll try and care, uh, but that the defensive side of the ball is the, the place where they've been a worse rebounding team for sure. So if Santi Aldama wants to crash those offensive rebounds, uh, that that is at least something that Memphis has done a little bit better than that defensive rebounding because that hasn't been awesome. But yeah, t- to your point, like a stretch big uh, should continue to be a problem for this 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 type of Warriors team where you know they've either got a dude like Draymond who's probably guarding the centers more frequently than not. I expect him on Triple J in this one, uh, and and a lot of the the focal point of the the defense for the Dubs will probably be a lot more on Desmond Bain. To your point, at this point, like it's a dude that's going to be the point guard and the shooting guard and the forward whatever like whatever they need from him uh, and. and and Triple J is just going to be sort of roaming a bit more. 
probably take a lot of threes, uh, but the corner threes as well as a weakness for the, on defense for the, the dub. So Santi Aldama is more likely to be down there than, than Triple J. But uh, let me close it out with Scary Terry Rozier. I'm going to take an over on the, another principle of like who else is going to shoot. Uh, Duncan Robinson, Miami Heat point guard Duncan Robinson is now out as well. Bam, likely to sit if I'm going to buy into the idea that a late addition to the injury report like he has become is going to continue to trend towards not playing, right? That's the one one of the only things we can kind of rely on with the NBA injury report is if you're a late questionable tag and you weren't originally on the injury report, you're trending towards not playing. And I'll, I'll buy into that for uh, for Bam in this one as well. So I, I've still got Terry at 17 and a half points. I do think that's going to be uh, only available at 18 and a half before too long. So I hope we can still grab the 17 and a half for him. I mean, it's just volume, man. Like he has not been shooting well, but he's been shooting a lot uh, over the course of the last five. He's up to about uh, 17 field goal attempts per game. Shooting at a 40% clip is the problem, right? So it's it's not like he's been an awesome per, uh, shooter. He's only been at about 42% in that time frame. But I mean, the minutes are at 35 a game. This is with Bam and Duncan and Jimmy even in there for one or two of those. Uh, and now we're just talking about nobody, right? Uh, none of those dudes in. I, I will see some Caleb Martin shots go up, I think, in this one as well. But those are the two dudes who I see uh, spending the most time with the ball in their hands. And there's not really, like, a great matchup here against Cleveland. Like, are I would bet under in this game before I bet over for sure. When I, when I'm talking about the, the heat and Cavs, these are two of the teams that when they face each other right now, like the sort of the, the, the decrease in free throw attempts and foul calls has definitely made both these teams have some 80 styles looking games. Um, but the only dude that's going to shoot for, for this team, if he takes 20 shots and we get like 85 to 90 possessions on offense for this Miami heat team, and he's taken a quarter of the shots, then it's still okay for to assume that he'll have a quarter of the points as well for whatever they can actually get up. So there's, there's really nothing there. If he's other than that, like it's just volume because it's not like Cleveland gives up a ton. He'll probably be looking at a bunch of Isaac Okoro on him. Maybe some Karis Levert in that starting lineup as well, uh, taking on Terry Rozier, but uh, that doesn't mean that he's not, like I said, going to get both the mid range shot where you can get some points off of Cleveland in the mid range. They have been a good three point defense for most of the season um, but both these teams are missing a, so many dudes that like i still think the defense for cleveland is more also predicated on their their slow pace than anything so yeah the, the, the possessions aren't going to be there i can't give you some like really awesome reasoning behind this behind uh, other than like he's going to take 21 shots i'm going to take him to get 18 points in this game it's just that simple yeah no i mean the numbers back that up because you look at his last six with charlotte when he had a 29 percent usage rate against Cleveland. He went over 22 points in all of them, average 25 and not on particularly efficient shooting. So yeah, if he's, if he's going to be asked to, to shoot, I think actually bam playing is better for Rogier's offense as kind of a, a partner for him. Sure. We'll see about Jimmy. I really thought he was going to play on Monday. It was really <laughs> disappointing for the heat to hold him out and just kind of punt a huge game for them against Philly and um, so now I don't trust them. Anything they're doing in terms of their injury report uh, or or how hard they're trying to stay out of this play in. But yeah, Rozier being a volume shooter. Sure. Let's 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 ride that. I mean, the Cavs are shorthanded for sure. This is not a full strength defense. Yeah, that, that that's it. That I, I'm sorry. I don't have more on the on matchups and other than that for you, but I just I got to play the numbers in this one. And that's what I'll do with, with Rozier. So that is all the time we have for you in play of props. Continue to follow along all season and into this postseason as well, of course, as we also have best bets up for you each and every weekday. And until we see you next, happy betting. Yeah,